Thank you everybody for coming. My name is Kyle Zagrodsky. I'm the uh, president and founder of GoFigure Software. Uh, we've been in business for about 13 years, uh, served thousands of customers in 51 different countries, and we're probably one of the top three or four club management softwares in this industry. Um, club management software and code writing is not my passion. Computers aren't even my passion. I don't even really like them that much. Um, but they are a necessary tool, and um, we, you know, being the entrepreneur guy that I am, started the company based upon a need many years ago. Uh, originally, I was a club owner, uh, like many of you, and a lot of the things that we did, um, I didn't have much money when I started out. This was in my 20s, um, and we owned, uh, my wife and I owned nine clubs, and we did a lot of things to get us members, and um, we were taught a lot of things from the industry, shows and things, just like that you guys are coming through, but we had a lot more success than uh, many other people, a lot of the common things that you'll hear about. And um, one of the things that probably brought you to the show was how do you get 76 referrals in 30 minutes? And I'm gonna tell you that at the very end. Um, it's, a, it's a cool trick. It's something I came up with just on the spot after my client, my staff had come to me and said that they were, there was nothing else they could do to get referrals out of employees. And it, it came to me, we threw it together, put it together in 15 minutes and then um, launched it and it worked great. Um, since then, it's been implemented in hundreds of clubs, and it works great every time. I haven't heard anybody get 76 referrals yet, but the least amount of referrals I've ever heard anybody getting in 15 minutes was like 23. So it works almost every time, and it's, and it's almost free. It doesn't cost you anything. So um, I know a little bit about the club industry. My, um, my wife and I in our clubs, we had almost 100% closing average when somebody would come in a club. Um, our, our, our philosophy was that when people came to your business, they had some need that they were trying to serve. And if they left the club without joining, they only left for one reason, and that's because they didn't feel that you could satisfy their need. For the most part, the types of people we attracted were a deconditioned market, which should be the market that we're all after, frankly, because that's the biggest market out there available to us. And um, you know, one of the things that I read a statistic one time that never left me, which was if somebody is obese, which is uh, you know, not, as, not as overweight as you think it would be, um, they've got, uh, they'll live an average of seven years shorter than people that aren't. And that dis dis statistic disturbed me um, because that's you know, seven years off of the end of your life and it's, uh, it's the time where you really want to be evaluating your life and enjoying grandkids and you know, your grandkids enjoying you and your children still around to talk to and you're just chopping seven years off the end of it. I always felt it was very disturbing. And so for the attitude we had when somebody came in to join, especially someone who's decon deconditioned, was that if they didn't join, usually a person who's decon deconditioned, they're coming to your business as a last resort. They're not coming to you because uh, they, you know, they've, 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 everything else has failed for them. For someone who's deconditioned to come into a gym is a very big deal. And um, if you let them leave without joining, you've done a, a tremendous disservice. Chances are they're not going to go shop a bunch of other gyms. And it was a very uncomfortable situation for them to come in. So respecting that, understanding what it means for that person if they don't join, I think is the, uh, the genesis to a good sales presentation because Tom Hopkins, a famous um, sales trainer, he was kind of the ilk of Zig Ziglar, same kind of time frame, was once cornered in, cornered in an elevator and he, somebody asked him, okay, look, Tom, you're a great salesman. Everybody thinks you're awesome. You got all these tricks. What is the one thing that you can tell me that will help me to be a great salesperson? And he says, you've got to love the product you're selling. And if you don't love that, then go find a different industry to work in. And I think one of the things that we could do to love the product we're selling is to understand the outcome of if you don't use our product, okay? And so from that perspective is the is the perspective I approached this industry and the way I ran my clubs. Um, I always pretended I had a competitor right across the street whether I had one or not. I always pretended the competitor came up with better ideas than I did. And so it was this kind of mindset of over-servicing people, which I think the industry, and I'm not unique to that, what the industry actually does now is um, we're really good at over-servicing. So let's talk a little bit about that in a minute. Let's talk a little bit about the club industry because I've been reading some statistics lately that don't make me really happy about things and I think that we, we sense it all but we're not really thinking about it. And I'm, this is not a doom and gloom and I'm going to tell you guys how to deal with this and doom and gloom is not how I think about things. Um, I always think, well, I always live in the future. If anybody ever does that, I always, I'm always thinking about two or three years down the road. I always think of a, something I want to achieve and then I just kind of backfill everything to make it happen. 
it's a different mindset. Only 12% of Americans at any given time work out at a gym, and that's been like that for about the past 20 years, really since these statistics have been tracked 20, 25 years. Uh, there's only one event that really caused that number to jump from about 12 to 13 percent and uh, that was actually the Curves franchise because of the market they went for it was a different market but it really only increased about 13 percent and then it sort of waxes and wanes between 12 and 13 percent now um, and that's a little bit depressing um, healthcare costs are almost uh, increasing at twice the rate of inflation obesity is on the rise uh, heart disease cancer rates and diabetes are still rising and um, um, our gyms are a solution to a lot of these problems. Uh, just at my company alone, 10% of my staff of different ages have uh, contracted cancer in the past uh, three to five years. And uh, we, we work from home now, so it's not, it's not in the water. <laughs> uh, they're all alive, but uh, it's disturbing to me because it tells me there's something going on and the, the thing that kind of freaks me out a little bit is that it's our industry has a lot of the pre preventative holistic solutions uh, to this problem. Um, we continue to innovate. I mean, I think of a gym that I walked into 10, 12 years ago is substantially different than the gyms we see today. The types of equipment that are available, the type of systems, the follow-up, the everything we could do to retain, the quality of the presentations, the staffs look better, the staff looks better. I mean, everybody's got a uniform. I mean, what gym have you gone into where you had a schleppy looking staff and it was dirty and smelled bad. Those just almost don't exist anymore. Um, and so the, uh, but that, that did exist 15 years ago. And so we've gone through this wholesale change, but uh, uh, we don't really see that our bottom line is really increasing. We still can see to see the same type of people that fit that 12% year after year. Uh, the 88% of Americans that don't work out represent the market that we really need to be mar focusing, for, focusing on. And um, there's a reason why I'm talking about this because I could teach you about how to prospect and get referrals and all that kind of cool stuff, which I will get to, but um, there's a few things we need to understand fundamentally about how our industry needs to present itself. And so I want to talk about a few things here. First of all, is anybody who John Paul Jones is? You know him, you just don't realize you know him. He was a, an American, you know, raise your hand if you know the guy. All right, good. Um, the, he's, uh, uh, he was actually from uh, Ireland, I believe, and he became a, um, a sailor in the American Army in the Revolutionary War. And he was the guy that came up against one of the most powerful, feared British vessels on the seas, and they got in a battle, and his ship was sinking, and the British were taunting him, okay, you ready to surrender, you know, and all this kind of stuff going on. And he was the guy that says, we have not yet begun to fight, turned his ship, ran it into the frigate. All of his people jumped on there with hand-to-hand -hand combat, beat them up, took over their ship, and brought the ship back to America. Um, I like that story. Not only is it just tremendous bravery on the open seas, you know, I mean, you're going to die if you don't surrender out there. Um, and a very tough-minded individual. And there's something about him that I want to kind of pull together in just a moment. Fred Smith, the founder of FedEx. Does anybody know why he's got such a cool story uh, over and above everybody else? A lot of us have heard this story. His, he actually read, wrote a paper about the Federal Express concept in college, got a C on the paper, uh, thought the idea was so good, went and started this company, raised some money, and got to the point where he had like $12,000 left and payroll was due the next day and it was like $100,000. <laughs> got on a plane, flew to Vegas, gambled, won all the money he needed for payroll, came back and was able to keep the company going. Um, another personal situation I have here, and I don't by any means clump me in the same category as John Paul Jones or Fred Smith, but um, I had a very angry member one time, and I want you to try to think about what are the three things that, that, these, two, that these three stories actually have in common. I had a member that was actually so angry, she had that kind of insane look in her face one time. And um, uh, we, had, we hadn't done anything wrong. I mean, I was evaluating the situation. I know, she's kind of freaking me out, go away. <laughs> and um, it, was, it was uncomfortable, and she was insulting me, insulting our club, and it was just like the thing you never want to have happen. I mean, this woman had blown a gasket, and I don't know, somebody kicked her dog or what happened, but she was taking it out on me, my staff, right in front of all my members. So we asked her to step outside, you know, hey, you know, come on, Dorothy, let's step outside and chat about this. And just asking her to step outside just escalate, like, who do you think you are to ask me to do anything? And it was just probably one of the most confrontational, uncomfortable situations I'd been in in my life. 
Finally, I got her to step outside, and nothing I could say or do or promise. I mean, we were, we were bend over backwards customer service people, and it was just, I was flummoxed. And I'm looking at this person, and I remembered one thing my dad said to me when I was like 15 years old. He says, son, when people are angry, it's because of one reason, one reason only. It's because they're scared. And so I remembered that, and I thought, what, this woman's afraid of something. Right now, she's probably afraid of looking like a fool because I've addressed every one of her issues and she's not making any sense. So I just stopped and I walked right up to her and I gave her a hug. I thought I was going to get, I thought there was a good chance, a good high chance that I was going to get decked. And uh, she just broke down and started crying. And we became friends after that and that was it. There's one common thread between John Paul Jones, Fred Smith, and the way I dealt with this situation is that each one of them was a unique way to solve a problem. Okay, non-standard problem solving. And, um, and I respect that a lot. I mean, anybody who come up with a new way of dealing with a common situation is, um, is you're not always gonna win, but it's, I think it's when we deal with our own fear of the unknown outcome. I mean, seriously, when that, that woman, she could, have, she could have really probably knocked out a tooth. She wasn't a, she wasn't a weak woman. And obviously what I'm gonna do if a woman's hitting me, you know, in front of my business, this is gonna be awesome. You know, <laughs> I figured right, that, right there, but uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be, mean bad things for me. But the reason why I bring up these three stories is, is because um, A, they're inspirational, but B, they help us to understand that there are different ways to think about problems that we face. And so I wanna talk about this, just who do we think we are, okay? What does the untapped 88% want? They want fitness? Sure, but most aren't willing to do what it needs to take. They don't want to sweat. They don't want to make the effort. We know who these people are. They want weight loss? Of course, everybody wants weight loss, but no one wants to make lifestyle changes. And the next one is better health. Um, yes, everybody wants better health, but many have been trained to take medication. Okay, we're like one of the most overly medicated societies on the planet. Um, and so we have, this is the mindset, mostly, I'm not saying everybody, so when I say that these, I'm making big generalizations, and I know this isn't always the case, so when I'm naming 88%, I'm talking about 75% of the 88%, that's what this, that's what they're, uh, they want, but how do you get that? How do you attract a segment that is, for the most part, rejected what we offer? Right now, health clubs are all just duking it out. It's a mosh pit for that 12%. It's how do I get, how do I increase my sales? How do I prospect? How do I get more prospects? How do I keep my members? Retention is the big key word now. You've got to do all these things and I could talk about each one of these things in, in minute detail up here on stage. But uh, you have to understand this and this is the thing, the epiphany I had recently this past summer is that uh, we're not a gym. Uh, what we do is we offer a vision of people, a vision of what they want. And I thought about this. What does a gym actually accomplish for people? Well, it could add 20 yards to their golf swing. You could increase your libido without drugs. HGH increases when you work out, and people get, they keep going and taking the Viagra, Viagra and whatever. Um, build a titanium immune system. Does your immune system, can you, can you increase immune system by the services and the products that you sell in your club? Absolutely, and there's data to prove that you could actually do things to prevent cancer. There's many holistic approaches. And the thing that made me actually think about this, the untouchable 88. These are the things that they want, okay? Um, I had a neck injury when I was in my early 20s and really just changed the course of my, the way I, I thought I was gonna live my life. And I went to a chiropractor and the chiropractor caused me pain. You know, it really did, it scared the crud out of me. And so I didn't go again for years, and I just managed to, you know, through yoga and stretching and whatever, uh, managed to, you know, deal with the um, issue I had with my neck. Until about a, a year ago, I heard a radio station, and the radio station was talking about all these things, like, you know, improving your immune system and fighting cancer and all these things, and buried within it was this chiropractor that they were promoting. And I was like, wow, that kind of sounds like an approach to a chiropractor that I would be willing to investigate because they seem to understand the whole approach to taking care of the human body. So I went to go start seeing this chiropractor. And so what does a chiropractor do? I mean, fundamentally what a chiropractor does is you've got a spine and there's nerves coming out from your, your vertebrae. And when you get, these are two vertebrae and they're coming together and they do this number, you pinch a nerve, it's like pinching a hose and whatever organ that nerve is, is connected to, it's getting less of a signal from your brain and doesn't function as well. And so they go and they try to straighten out your spine to make sure that you don't have this, these uh, nerve pinchings called subluxations and your nervous, your back is straight 
and you feel better and other things start functioning better. And there's all kinds of amazing success stories with chiropractors, but this chiropractor teaches you that. I know all this because I've had an education from my chiropractor. And she continues all these supplementations, how to eat, a big nutrition thing, and it's always dressed up with, you know, one of these types of things and more. And every time I go in there, I'm constantly being educated on nutritional supplements and eating and th take this type of vitamin and that, what it does for me. And it occurred to me that she's not marketing herself as a chiropractor, she's marketing herself as a solution to a problem. And that's what got me in there after being terrified of going to a chiropractor for almost 20 years her marketing approach to addressing solutions is what actually pulled me in. As gym owners, there's almost nothing that she tells me that I don't already know or had a pretty good idea of just by being a function of being in this industry for so long. I mean, does anybody know the vi vi benefits of vitamin D? Okay, the benefits of vitamin D is you take more than 6,000 units of vitamin D a day and your chances of getting breast cancer or any kind of cancer drop down precipitously. Okay, um, if you don't know the benefits of eating kale and spinach and these kind of things, these nutritional supplemental things, plus an improved cardiovascular system and strength. If I have a better strength, core strength, I'm going to be have a less chance of getting injured in a car accident. If I fall downstairs, I'm going to have less less chance of breaking a bone because um, I'm going to have stronger strength and I'll be able to catch myself. We're providing solutions, and so what I want to submit to you is that you're not a gym your solutions because people have already when people walk to your gym why do what is the very first people actually you probably guys probably answer this didn't even think of this when people call your gym what's the th first thing they ask you about your gym anybody want to take a guess excuse me how much do you cost you know why because you're all the same they don't they don't need to come in there they want to know how much you are okay when they come in there when I go into a gym um, the only thing I really care about is how close is it and does it smell and is it clean? Because they're, you know, I'm going to go work out. That's a gym. But if I have somebody who specializes in any one of these things, I would be di they would be differentiated in my mind. And so I submit to you that you are solutions and you're not a gym and you'll attract the untouchable 88. I would like to take a moment and do something that you might not have been expecting is I think this is so important for our industry. Um, I would like for you guys just to kind of sit where, you, except for you, you might have to move, is to get together in the little groups of four or five, just this half the room, this half the room, and think about something. Go ahead and stand up. You get over there. And I want y'all guys to think about something that actually differentiates your club um, than what you are right now. Not the gym, a solution. And how would you present that to somebody? Because I can get you the prospects all day long, but if you're going for the same 12%, you're still in the mosh pit with every other gym, and I want you to be different than that. And so feel free to take a couple minutes, five minutes, and try to come up with three things as a group. If y'all want to move forward, come on, move forward. I'm not going to do it for you. <laughs> Just come up with three things that you think a, a, a problem that your gym solves for people. It could be health reasons. It could be uh, better performance, you know, increased libido. It could be uh, anything. And think of a way that you would actually say that in a sentence and just discuss it right quick. Just somebody throw an idea out there. What do you think your gym solves? You ought to know some of these. You're here. I mean, if you've ever been to club industry or URSA, you know. Let me ask you a question. What, is, what does yoga do for somebody? How does it help them? Well, excuse me? Why does flexibility help you? Okay, so normal every, what type of normal everyday tasks that everybody does, it would be simpler. If I'm talking to somebody who's over the age of 50, why is flexibility important? Because you can play tennis. What's that? Because you can play tennis. Okay. Okay, so you're, you're the, you, you improve tennis. Okay, you improve your tennis game. Yoga. <coughs> I find yoga gives me <coughs> peace of mind, so it may not even get... Stress reliever. Right. Okay, how many people, is, how much, how many people die from stress related? Any, everything is stress related. It causes inflammation. Stress causes inflammation. Yoga can actually reduce your stress. There's a supplement you could sell that could reduce inflammation, actually help you prevent disease. You know what it is? Omega-3. It's a great inflammation reducer. Almost all disease is a result of the inflammation. Do you know that? It's true. And uh, so yoga is going to come in there. It's going to reduce your stress, deal with inflammation. Hey, we got a great 
omega-3. It's a stress reducer. Um, uh, and the way I'd probably market that is stress-related illness, or you could just say uh, number one, uh, number one, one of the number one killers in this country is uh, stress, uh, is, uh, is uh, I want to say heart disease, heart, is it, heart dis it is heart disease, but uh, you know, uh, and you could say on probably over the age of 50, one in 15 Americans is going to have some heart-related illness caused by stress. You know, come find out why we're your solution. That's what I'm talking about. We know, we, everybody knows, I know what yoga is, okay? Um, it's stretching and flexibility. Um, I even know that's going to reduce my stress. But I didn't go into the chiropractor until she started talking about, and the, th the buzzword that stuck with me was I, was, I was getting afraid of cancer. I had two people in my office under the age of 30 got cancer, weird cancer too. Um, so, and I started thinking, wow, what's going on? And so, uh, boom, I was on the radio and I started hearing about, their, this guy was talking about cancer and how to prevent cancer and foods that prevent cancer, vitamins that prevent cancer. You want to learn more about this? Come to our free clinic. And I went there and I, and you go, go to the chiropractor to learn about this. It was like the very last thing in the whole ad. It was a solution to problem. It wasn't a feature of the place. It was, a, it was the actual final el outcome. Did y'all come up with uh, anything beyond feature or just a solution, a problem, a solution to a problem that you guys solve? For convenience. Convenience is a feature. It is. Convenience is a feature. If I go to, if I go join Snap Fitness or Anytime Fitness, why do I go? Convenience, because it's a feature. If I go buy a car and you try to sell me power windows, is that a feature? That's why it's a feature. You want to sell, you want to sell that, but it's not a feature. It's a feature. You don't just want to, you want to sell a solution. It's more, you're, you're, you're on the right track, but uh, the temptation is, um, agility, strength, flexibility, you know, we do it better, we have more services, we offer childcare, we have, you could, we have everything you could possibly want because we're super awesome Jim. And I commend you for being all those things. But as long as you are that, you, anybody could be that. But if you brand yourself as a solution, you're offering something that the 88% wants. The 12% is already attracted to you. They're already gonna come. Everybody calls and asks the same question, how much are you? So I like the, uh, uh, let's, think of, let's think of a couple things that people take medication for. Viagra, okay? It's the 50 plus market. Um, they're trying to increase their libido. Everybody's want, no one wants to be old anymore. Massively huge market in the United States, the 50, 60 plus. Um, and when you work out, your human gro growth hormone increases, okay? And people's libido increases when they go work out, all right? Anti-aging, massive industry in this country. What do people want? What is it they, what is, what do you get from anti-aging? You look better and you feel better. Why? Because you got up, you looked in the mirror and you saw your father. You got up, you looked in the mirror and you saw your mother, okay? And that's why people go spend a lot of money on anti-aging, but people are trained in this country to take a pill. And you know what people are starting to realize? Cancer rates are going up. I was talking to our insurance provider and I said, man, it's just a, a black cloud moved over, go figure. I mean, seriously, what's up with those cancer rates? He says, no. He says, we're seeing cancer in, in people that don't get cancer all over the place. It's increasing every year. We don't know why. Because it's the junk we put in our body. It's the medications we take. You go and read any medication you take, and there's a list of side effects. Okay? What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you. If I were to have a bucket of spinach right here, and I ate the whole bucket of spinach, would I live? Of course, if I would take a bottle of just about any prescription medication, would I be extremely ill? Probably the hospital, maybe die, because it's poison. And medication is controlled amounts of poison that deal with a very specific issue, and it's some scary crap we're putting in our bodies. You put enough of that low doses of poison in your body over a long period of time, you're going to contract something, okay? We are seeing it. It's in our food, it's in our medication. You guys are the solution. You're a place of a source of education. You go sit any, through any of the nutrition, any of the vitamin, you talk to any of the supplement companies, and they're gonna be able to tell you, if you're not taking omega-3 and vitamin D, you're missing a huge boat. If you're not eating organic food, you're putting poison in your body that wasn't there 15, 20 years ago, okay? What does this have to do with prospecting? Because if we're prospecting and we're, our message is the same as it was, um, last time, then we're just going for the same 12%. And I'm just trying to expand the possibility that you might be a solution to a problem that's scaring the crap out of the American consumer. 
Now, I'm not sure exactly um, what you may or may not got out of that. Or maybe that has you thinking differently, and that might have been something different that you were thinking about when you came in here, and if, that's, if that bugs you and you think I'm wasting your time, I truly apologize. But it's been something that's been bothering me a lot about this industry uh, for a long time. And when I saw the way a chiropractor, in my emotional mindset towards chiropractors, was I thought, you know what, I probably have the same mindset about that chiropractor as somebody who doesn't go to a gym and won't go to a gym. Why did I go? Why did I, the most skeptical person about a chiropractor, make that decision? What happened? What was it? I wasn't, I wasn't sold a chiropractor. I was sold a solution to my fears. And she's darn good at it, too. By the way, if you want to actually, um, that, that chain of chiropractors, and I'm not promoting them. If you, if you don't like chiropractors, if you are a chiropractor, I apologize. Uh, Maximize Living is the, is the chain of chiropractors, like 800 of those guys and gals. And they, they, that's what they do. They sell these, these solutions. And they've got great marketing message, great material. You should go see one just to go see what they're doing. All right. Let's go figure out how we prospect. You guys know a lot of this stuff. And so some of these things you've already heard of. And so the three most important things in real estate, obviously location, location, location. Uh, the three most important things in the health club industry, prospect, retain, and repeat. All right. Let's talk about some prospecting stuff and some basic philosophy. Um, things you probably already know. Most of your members live within two or three miles of your gym. Do you guys, who here has a neighborhood around their gym? A neighborhood nearby? Who's a business? Business nearby? Business, I mean, you're a business district like downtown? Okay. Most people are going to be living or working within two or three uh, miles of your facility, so you need to stay focused, local, low cost, and repeat it, okay? Um, the reason why I'm going to have to get, I might have to get, get ahead of myself, and that happens to me sometimes, and never forget, it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you bring home, okay? Um, a lot of marketing campaigns and a lot of things that people do are very costly. Uh, there's a lot of cheap ways to do things, and I like to keep things local. Local and cheap is the way, th way I did things. When we started our gyms, I had no money. I remember the very first gym we opened, we needed 100 members on the very first day because all the bills were due the next day, and I didn't have any money. So we signed up 103 members, okay? And that was with no pre-sales. I didn't know what pre-sales were. Let's talk about Facebook a little bit. I like Facebook, and you're going to hear a lot of people talking about Facebook today and tomorrow. Everybody's talking about social media. Um, last year and this year, people spent more... Facebook is the number one website that people spend their time on in this country and probably around the world now. So if you don't have a Facebook page, um, you need a club, a club Facebook page. They're simple to create. Uh, it's a big deal. And it, once people get Facebook pages, they often stop right there. A couple of tricks to make Facebook work for you. Reward your members when they tag you or friend you on Facebook. It could be a water bottle. Um, and you make a big deal of it. Um, never ask your members to do anything and, uh, and it's not face-to-face -face when you ask them to do stuff like that. Just, oh my gosh, guess what? We just got our club Facebook page update. Have you been there yet? You know how it is. You got to have people liking you and friending you. If you, guys, if you guys just go like us on your Facebook page, I got these new water bottles. You can pick one up when you come in next time. Will you like me when you get home? Great. Hey, guess what? I'll let you do it right now. Come on, there's our computer. Come on, Julie. Women are a lot easier to get to do that kind of stuff, by the way. Uh, the men are. Men are in a hurry. Um, but every woman should have liked you on Facebook. Post frequently. At the end of the day, we clean our club and we post on Facebook, okay? It's gotta be one of these things that you do every day. Um, and, it's, uh, and I'm not a guy, I don't, I already told you about my philosophy. I'm not a, I'm not a computer kind of guy. I understand them as tools, what they provide for us. And from an entrepreneur business perspective, it's a tool. And so I try to make the best tool possible to achieve that end. Facebook is one of these tools we just have to learn how to embrace, whether you like it or not. I was probably, I, I didn't want to get on Facebook years ago. I'm like, Facebook, really? I knew social media was catching on several years ago. And I'm like, okay, I'll get on Facebook. And now I'm seeing, uh, not now, but uh, years, a couple of years ago, I was like, man, this is going to be huge. Everybody's going to be doing Facebook. Every business is going to be doing it. And the cool thing about it is, is when some, you post something on your Facebook, everybody, of course, gets to see it. And so you should be doing it every day. Um, one of my competitors, who I have respect for, and I like the guy, even though his product's inferior. I'm just kidding, he's a good company. Um, he sends me an email, you know, I get an email notification of their Facebook page or something every day. I don't open any of them, okay? Because I get like 100 emails a day, but I see the tagline and it's in my head 
all the time. I'm thinking about that guy, and I, I appreciate his aggressive nature. And it doesn't take much time. You could just say, hey, I want to give out a shout out to Mark Smith, who lost eight pounds this month. Good deal. He's, uh, you know, or I just want to say uh, thank you or to all those people. Or I want to remind everybody we have our anti-cancer clinic tomorrow at five o'clock. Be there, you know, anything. It could be anything. I got new shoes today, and I did my workout, and it was awesome. You know, I got seven compliments. Whenever you post a photo on your Facebook page, there's a way to tag your photo. Tag your photo with your website, okay, www.igofigure.com or whatever, myhealthclub.com. Every photo that goes on your web page, every photo that goes on your Facebook page should be tagged with your website because it affects your search engine ratings, okay? People will charge you $400 a month to manage your Facebook page. You don't need to spend that money. It's all extremely self-explanatory. You just got to put up pictures occasionally. Once a week, twice a week, you put up a picture. Once a day for five minutes, you just log in and say something about your gym and tell them what's coming up. You've increased your Facebook. Um, you've increased your search engine optimization. And every time you're posting, people who've liked you have seen it. Um, I suggest you come up with some kind of pro promotion. You're going to do something big. Everybody gets a water bottle if they like me on Facebook, but we have some big prize that for whoever, you know, it'll be random. Our goal is if we have 500 people like us on Facebook this month, we're giving away whatever. Okay, uh, you know, five months free on their membership or something like that. Um, and it's an easy thing for people to do. Uh, running an ad on your Facebook. Um, hit, targets with, uh, hit your targets with Facebook ads. Has anybody ever ran a Facebook ad? Okay, one guy? Okay, good for you. Um, Facebook ads are really cheap. I love them because they're so local. You could actually go and run. Oh, here's a, I went and took a screenshot. Could you please click, Alex? Thank you. Um, in Facebook, anybody, this was just my Facebook page, my personal one. I went in there, and you can create an ad. You can send it to as, your zip code you want. I want everybody over the age of 50 to see my you know, cancer prevention ad. And I'm going to put a budget of $250. When your budget's gone, you're done. Okay, it, it, you don't, it's not like, oh my gosh, I have this pay-per-click campaign, it's going to recur, and I'm going to have this outrage of expenses, it's it, it's it. you could upload a little image, it's a little thumbnail, and everybody in that zip code who's in that age range, you can just click male or female, age, and then take your thing, cancer prevention, something very simple, don't get wordy because these are little, um, little tiny thumbnail-y kind of ads, and so you need something very simple, take a picture of a person's eyes, and Put the, put the cancer provision on it. The reason why I like eyes, everybody knows his eyes and ads. So you see a lot of markers sometimes will just have pictures of somebody's eyes, you know, staring at you and it makes you look. Um, any, little th any little thing that will cause them to grab their attention and then just something that you're selling, you know, increased libido, whatever, 20 yards longer on your golf swing, whatever it is that you're going for, and they're going to click on it and the click that it needs to go to is the ad and of course in the ad will be a link to your landing page that you want them to see on your website with a special and why you address that issue that they clicked on. Does anybody know what a lead bag is? Sometimes they're called lead boxes. Everybody hates them. I have never talked to a club owner or manager that hasn't hated lead bags or lead boxes. They hate putting them out. There's never any leads in them. They complain about them. I've had a lot of clubs and these people have always complained about it. Everybody says they don't work. They don't work in my area. There's no way in my town anybody is ever going to put a name and number in a bag. That, 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 that's that's uh, you know privacy thing. Somebody could take it and they won't do them. So I told a club that was opening up um, a month and a half ago who was asked me advice and I said get out 70 lead bags everywhere around your business. And really? Yeah. And I said, I said don't get boxes, get bags. Go get yellow bags, put a flyer on it, you know, grand opening week, enter here for a free whatever with a picture of a person on it in the location. Don't put your address, just put we're across from Starbucks or whatever at the whatever intersection because people don't think in addresses, they think in landmarks. <laughs> it has to be yellow because yellow is the middle color of the spectrum and your brain sees yellow easier than any other color. And when you walk into the store, I said, here's what you say. You go in the store and you say, hey, my name is Kyle. I'm with Kyle's Fitness Center. We're just opening up over there across the street from Starbucks. Starbucks. And what I would like to go ahead and do is I'd like to leave this bag here so your customers could register for a free one, for one week membership. And without hesitating, you say, and in exchange, I'd like to go get one of your flyers and business cards to put into my business for helping me out. Would over here be okay? And you start gesturing as you're going to put it down. That's how you get out a bag and it happened and it works almost every time. And she got out 70 bags. She got three leads out of her 70 bags. 
okay, which I told her was going to happen. I said, go check them every week. They're going to get thrown away. They're going to get the pins ripped off, you know, no big deal. But what happened was she did radio advertising. And when people are listening to radio advertising, they're not writing down the number, but they're hearing it, they're hearing it, they're hearing it. And then she had people getting out of their car, going into a business and seeing the bag. God must be telling me something. They wrote down the number off the bag and joined. And she said, so many people came in saying they saw the bag. Now, does anybody have any idea how much a, a billboard actually costs in their area around their gym? $300 to $900 a month for a billboard. These are mini billboards, okay? And I could do it for free, virtually free. And, um, and I get to put it out everywhere in every business. And then one time what I did was I went and ran an ad in the newspaper or you, and I, on the wall of my business, I put everybody's flyer and I said, supporters of you know, Kyle's gym. So I was like, wow, the whole town loves this guy. You know, they're all supporting. The whole neighborhood loves this guy. Glad thing I, good thing I joined here. And then I'll even take a picture of it and I'll take it into the business when I go check on my lead bag. Hey, what happened to the bag I left here last week? Oh, by the way, look, I put your flyer on my wall. Isn't that awesome? Can I go and stick another one right over here? I don't care if the thing gives me a lead or not. I'll check them every week, but I get out there in front of everybody, and a lead bag costs me about $2. And that's why I like the bags over the boxes, because the boxes get expensive. Everything's got to be a nice, big, shiny box. I just want a yellow bag with a cool flyer. And it works every time. So $2 or $3 a bag. And oh, one thing you need to understand about lead bags is it's going to take you several hours to make them. It's, it's arts and crafts time when you do lead bags. So get your favorite adult beverage, get a movie with your wife saying, baby, we're making lead bags tonight, or whoever your staff is. And you get out your 70 deals, and you, cut, and you know, have your printer all pre-cut them up. It needs to be a color photo with a picture of a person, a, a call to action, register for a free week, a couple little things about your gym, the location with a landmark, and your phone number. That's it. And get them all within that two-mile radius of your gym. Direct mail, um, internet overload. I, like I said, I get 100, e I get 100 emails a day. Um, and direct mail is awesome because when I go out to my direct mail, my, my direct mailbox, <laughs> when I go out to my mailbox, how many pieces of mail do I have in there? Eight, seven, six, five, whatever. Um, and so no matter what, I've got to walk out to my mailbox or my wife does, we go out and grab it as you're walking back, I get more attention and more from that, that consumer's eyes than anything I could send through the internet. In the internet, that's a flash in the pan. Seriously, I mean, how much time do you spend on a website that isn't Facebook? Seconds. Okay, there's every website I go to, there's stuff everywhere. I mean, the Facebook ads that, I'm, that I told you about are great, but you're gonna get more business from a direct mail and a lead bag than you will from Facebook. Facebook is just kind of one of those keeping you in the, the know and people, oh wow, you know, you try to, try to target that customer that's, that deals with that concern or that fear they have, you know, cancer or golf swing or whatever, okay? Um, with any direct mail company, you can get specific demographic lists. I want people between the age of 45 to 55 in this income area in these zip codes. Boom. Any direct mail company can get that for you and uh, you get to reach the specific target market that's either not on Facebook doesn't have, or, or is cluttered with all the junk in their email address and they're getting something directly to them. And of course, that's the list competition. And the next thing you need to know is always use postcards. Do not use anything inside of an envelope. And you can get a postcard about 60% bigger than this. This long and about that tall. And it's just in your face, right? You're, you can't flip through it, your mail, without seeing this big thing. And I love postcards because I don't have to open anything. So even if I only grab their attention for a few seconds, hmm, Kyle, Jim, whatever. Okay, I just had more of their attention than anything I could do on the internet. So even if they don't join, I'm building a top of mind awareness. And you could test it out with a very small amount of money, 500 to $900. You could actually do a very targeted 500 person, 200 person mail out going, you know, that Kyle guy, he's sure to talk a lot of smack. Let's just go ahead and try it with a small direct mail. You're gonna get that money back if you do the postcard correctly. I like pictures of people. I like a nice white background. And I like a very short, simple message that addresses the solution to a problem, okay? By the way, when you, when you address a solution to a problem in your direct deal, you better have something ready for them to come in, like a seminar on the importance of uh, how, to build a, how to build a titanium. It's cold and flu season. How do you build a titanium immune system? We got the solution. Come by. Hey, we're going to have a, 
finger foods and I'm gonna let you try some of the foods that are very healthy and it's gonna be at five o'clock tonight. How much is it? Free? You remember, right? Well, not yet. Oh, well, for you it's $200. The next place, um, members are your best source for new members, specifically new members. Um, getting a referral at sign up. How many people get referrals at sign up? One, two, most of you. Half, okay. Um, my, my, I was good at this, I'll be honest with you, but my wife freaked me out, she was so good at this. Um, we used to give away things and uh, her presentation was killer, it really was. She would we would have these little 50 cent bottles. I mean, the cheapest workout, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this again. I mean, I actually kind of be embarrassed when I look back at what we used to give away for what we used to get. She would give these little 50 cent plastic water bottles away and she would put on so much excitement about this plastic water bottle that she continuously got five referrals every time she signed somebody up. It was freaking me out. I'm like, seriously? I was hoping people would get two. She's like, two? If they're excited enough to give me two, they're excited enough to give me five because it's all about their excitement. Oh my gosh, guess what? I've got a free gift for you just for joining today. And then you hold up the water bottle. This is one of our water bottles. It's got a logo on it. You can put your water in here, come here, and you'll look awesome with our new water bottle. I love these things. They're great. And they work great as a shaker. You can put a protein shake in there, shake it up right after your work on that. Awesome. I got this for you today. And then you hold up two guest passes or three or five. You don't give them to them, you hold them. All I need is in exchange for this water bottle or whatever it is that you're giving away, is a name and number of a few friends that you'd like to join. And it's a lot more fun if you come with a friend, right? Yeah. Who do you want to give it to? That's it. It's a, it's a sumptive close. Who do you want to give it to? I've already told you it's an awesome water bottle. I've already told you you're going to look great. You need a shaker. You're working out. You're going to be taking protein shakes, right? We've got to do the recovery, right? Yeah. We all know that's important. And you've got to be drinking a lot of water. Who told you last time that water wasn't good for you? We all know it is. So you're going to be drinking a lot of water. So I got this for you, and I got these guest passes. All you've got to do to earn this water bottle is just give me the name and number of three friends. Boom, they come in here, work out with you. You know you're going to stick it with it if your friends are with you, right? Who do you want to give it to? And you quit looking at them, and you put your pen down on the, on the guest pass, and you don't look them in the eye. You just assume, I'm waiting on the name. Um, um, oh, you, you know what? I'm going to give it to Mary. And if they can't think of any, they're like, going, well, I don't know anybody. Then the next question you ask is, great, you know somebody at work, right? Who's at work? Who's that girl who's always bringing in donuts? Okay, who's that guy who's always bringing in donuts? Or who's the guy who always wants to go out and get the Starbucks Super Latte Mocha Java Chino thing that has 8,000 calories? That guy. I want his name. Oh, yeah, that's Mark Smith. Okay, great. When she gives them to you or he gives them to you, referral passes. And this is a sumptive close. Every time you sign somebody up, the time they're most excited about their membership are first when they're joining and ask them when they're excited. You just performed a great service for them. You just saved their life, added seven years to their life. Okay, they should be excited about it. Guess what, I'm so glad you joined today. You know what, you came in here, I really appreciate it. And um, just by taking care of yourself, I know statistically, you're probably gonna live about seven years longer. Did you know that? That's more time with your grandkids. That's exciting, we're gonna do it together. And I got a special gift for you just for getting started today. And I'll go up and touch the guy that doesn't even want to be touched. That guy's giving me a look, that guy gonna to touch me. Yeah, I, I am, because I know I just helped that person. Presentation is everything. You gotta be able to do the presentation. Even the most untouchable people wanna to be touched. Next. Getting referrals at success points. This is the second most time that people are most excited about their membership is when they've, got, they've had some results. Do you guys do success checkpoints in your gym? Weigh and measure people, you know, um, you should be doing something like that. Um, one of the things that um, a lot of people don't get that kind of result, kind of attention unless they're paying for a personal trainer. Um, it takes seconds and it's a huge source for referrals. And so you could tell people to join. You know what, one of the things we do here, we don't want you to think you're getting results. We want you to know you're getting results. That's very important to us at our gym because if you're coming here and you don't know you're getting results, then you might quit. I mean, it's easy to quit a gym, isn't it? I mean, no matter how good we are, no matter how awesome it is, who really wants to come and work out every day? Anything that come up. The laundry's passed, the kids got the flu, all these things. I could think of a hundred reasons why I don't want to go to the gym today. So one of the things we do to make sure you keep coming is we check your results. I want to know how much weight you're losing, I want to know what your body fat percentage is, and I want to weigh and measure every month. And we're going to do it because I want you to see that the effort you're making here is worthwhile. Okay? We're going to add those seven years to your life. And we're going to do that together, okay? Uh, your presentation really matters, okay? And when people get results, if they're working out in the gym, how often is it that people aren't getting results if they're working out? It's pretty rare, 
they're always getting results. Great, oh my gosh, you just lost seven pounds. That's amazing, congratulations. Hey, hey, guess what? Did you know he just lost seven pounds? Isn't that awesome? You wanna congratulate this guy? I know, oh no, I do. Who's the first person you're gonna tell? Seriously, who are you gonna tell? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go tell my wife. Excellent, she didn't work out here, does she? I got a guest pass for her. Let's get her in here. What's her name? Can I call her at work today? Who else are you gonna tell? That's how you get the name and number. Who are you going to tell about the best news you just got today? That's their referral. It works almost every time. A lot of companies do um, website lead generation for their franchisees, a lot of franchise chains. Um, most of those leads aren't very good. Most of them don't turn into members because people just go off felt for them. There's no emotional attachment, it's another gem. Yeah, you got the lead, you got to call them. But if I call you, Guess what? Jennifer just said uh, uh, she just lost seven pounds and she said I should give you a call. I gave her a guest pass to give it to you. She probably said she's going to give it to you at work today. I want to go ahead and set up a time for you to come in and check out what she's doing. Okay? As you may know, Jennifer was really scared because her mom died of cancer and we've got an anti-cancer prevention program, whatever, and that she wanted me to tell you about. In the meantime, she's also lost seven pounds. I want to come in. Is today or tomorrow better? 70 or six referrals in 30 minutes. Can you hand me a bag, please? All right, so one of my gems, and we were all about referrals. We always got referrals at new members. We got referrals at weighing and measuring. I mean, we're all about referrals. I mean, referrals were 95% of our business. I was just at a convention for a large franchise this uh, past month or two, and they said online, they do a lot of online, you know, sign up online. That's, that's the deal, you gotta be able to sign up online, right? And if you don't have a website that takes memberships online, I mean, are you in business? They've been pushing this for two years. You know how many, what percentage of new members they get from online signups? Can anybody guess? 40%. Anybody else? That's lower. Lower than that. Lower. What? Lower. One. 1%. And they got a really cool interface. 1%. I don't join a gym because I, don't, I, I wouldn't join a gym online. And I'm a computer guy. I'm, I'm not really a computer guy. I own a software company, but that doesn't mean I'm a computer guy. I just want to know what it smells like. Like I said, I want to know what's clean. I want to know what the staff looks like. I mean, they, I mean are they friendly? You know, I'm going to go in there. Yo, what's up? You going to come join our gym? No, you punk. I'm not going to join your gym. You're some, yeah, you're a punk. I don't want to deal with that guy. I want to deal with the person that says, hey, thanks for coming in today. My name is, shakes my hand. Did you come in because you were interested in learning in, about the, our cancer prevention seminars? Or did you just want to go ahead and figure out how to increase your own human growth hormone? Which one matters to you most? Well, gee, both, but don't tell my wife. I mean, you know, whatever. I mean, about the cancer thing. Um, I got to go in and check it out. So anyway, I go into my clubs, and I've got three staff members. Kyle, we have rung every possible referral we can out our members. We can't do anything else. We were giving away T-shirt. We had T-shirt programs. I mean, uh, you know, we, we, we came up with a deal where we had gym bucks, you know. Every time you refer a friend, we give gym bucks, you know. Every time you'd work out five days a week we give you a gym buck and you could redeem and buy stuff with these it didn't cost you anything we were giving away uh, five or six hundred dollars worth of free stuff every month so we didn't let anybody buy any of our stuff the only way you could earn any of our products was to ref through referrals or working out so you, there was this value this perceived value you can't buy any apparel from Kyle's gym you could only earn it so when people earn stuff it was huge they wore that stuff with pride so when I went out there I had on my wall hanging up a barrel bag that was single stitch, the lowest quality money could buy, barrel bag with our logo on it, and it had been in collecting dust. So, and I, and I said, okay girls, you're going to tell me that we can't sign up, get any more referrals? Like, nope, everybody in town has already knows about it, nothing new Kyle. I said, really? Well, that's just to throw down the gauntlet, what are you going to do with it? Well, I'm going to pick you up and beat you up with it. Alright, so we got this, this barrel bag off the wall. All right, and we decided we were going to have a fashion show, and I was going to be the MC of the event. And I said, "Here's what we're going to do: we're going to have a fashion show in five minutes. You and you, my two staff members, are the uh, the models, and I'm the MC, and that's the catwalk. Well, what are we going to do?" I said, "All you got to do is act like a model. You like to act like a model. What girl doesn't act, act like a model? Guys will act like a model because they like getting paid. Girls act like a model because they like being a model." Okay, so just, who wants to be a model? I do, I do, I do. Okay, this is what you're modeling. 
I had one, gave one to this one, gave one to that one. I said, go model our bag. And I said, so I went out there and there was a group of people standing around. I said, okay, everybody, hey, heads up. I just want to go let you guys point out we got this um, item and it's our new spring barrel bag. I was like, and I've seen that out there before. Everybody knew I was full of it. But I went with it. It's, it's excellent. This is, this is special stitching on here, special single stitching. And I went out there and I talked about this barrel bag for probably eight minutes. I thought of every, look, this bag almost matches April's eyes and look how cute you're gonna look going through town with this barrel bag. Ladies, you could put your stuff right in here. And look, it zips, the zipper works. It's all, I went and talked about this barrel bag like it was probably the coolest thing they'd ever seen and people were laughing. There was, there was the barrel bag wasn't exciting. It was my presentation, I was having fun. So I'd go up there and go, go ahead and feel the, feel the quality craftsmanship. That's awesome. I mean, wouldn't you like to see yourself carrying around this bag? Aren't your friends gonna be, your friends gonna be jealous, aren't you? You know how hard it is to get one of these bags right, okay? I don't just go ahead and let you, you can't buy one of these. In fact, today, you still can't buy one of these bags because today, ladies and gentlemen, we are having a silent auction, okay? And I don't want your money. You can't give me enough money to buy this bag. It's a silent auction. Whoever gives me the most names and numbers of friends they'd like to be working out with here in our gym to see the result, type of results you people are getting gets this bag today and you've got 15 minutes. There's the sign-up list. It just about emptied the gym. Everybody got off on what they were doing. Everybody got over there and started filling out names and numbers and tearing off a piece of paper. And, and I got 76 names and numbers in 30 minutes. Okay, because I extended it a little bit because people are like getting out their, their phones and their address books and all this stuff. It doesn't have to be an auction. I like the idea of a silent auction because nobody knows how many names and numbers anybody else are giving. And I only gave away one bag. So I got names and numbers from everybody and I gave one bag and at that time that bag cost me $6.50. So I got down with my staff and I said, look, I don't expect you to be able to come up with stuff like that all along, but people want to refer their friends. Who doesn't want their friends to get the kind of results they're getting? They're coming here every day. They love this place. They love us and they love all the cool stuff that we do in here. They're just looking for an opportunity to give it. They want permission to give it. It wasn't the bag that got it, and sort of it was, because when the person won the bag, man, they, they <laughs> made a huge, you, you thought it was Price is Right, okay? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I got it, woohoo, it was me! And that one woman gave 15 referrals. Repeat. Back in the 80s, a marketing study was done that said you had to hear a marketing message or see a logo seven times before you would remember it. Have you all heard that before? Okay, if, if we've ever been to anything, we've all heard that. Um, I would stand to reason that it's a lot more now because the amount of clutter I get when I'm on the web, when I'm doing anything, I can't go anywhere, whether it's outside walking around without seeing some marketing message geared towards me. It's almost maddening. I mean, I, I feel sorry if people live in the country and come to the city. It's got to give them a headache. It's unbelievable. It's nonstop. And so it stands to reason that it's actually more than seven times now that you actually have to remember somebody. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I love lead bags so much. In order to get our names out there, we've got it that many times, it has to be low cost and it has to repeat. So you have to keep these repeating solutions. Facebook, at the end of every day, leaving that message, putting up a picture with a tag with your, with your website name, getting people to like you on Facebook is huge, okay? It's one of the repeat things. It's generally not gonna get people to come in and join, but they're thinking about you all the time, just like one of my competitors, always thinking about that guy. Lead bags, you can hate them all you want. There are many billboards. Think about the billboard, you're thinking, gosh, should we have that billboard over on the highway? Man, it is $700 a month. Do you hate spending $700 on the billboard? Would you rather have that $700? I could think of a lot of things I could do with $700. I'd rather give out lead bags, because lead bags, I can keep that train going for 25 bucks a month. Direct mail, I love it. It's a very targeted, it's, you're just trying to get the attention of a consumer's eyes. And it's, it's actually the one time in my life where some, I got three little boys, eight, six, and two. I run a couple different companies and I'm a busy guy, okay? 100 emails a day. If you don't got something important to say to me, I'm not listening because there are a lot of, a lot of people that want my time all the time. Okay, and it's not me being rude, but seriously, I could talk to people 24 hours a day and never get everything done that I need to get done. <clears throat> when I go get direct mail, it's that one quiet time. There's two times I get peace in my house and then one is not in the bathroom. It's when I'm taking a shower, because the bathroom's the kids just come in. 
when I'm taking a shower and when I'm walking to my mailbox. And if I can get somebody's attention right there when I'm walking to the mail, my attention, I read through all of them. And in fact, it's kind of a break. I'm not looking at the screen. I'm just curious what other people are doing. Oh, wow. All right. I kind of know what's going on in the community. Back to work. <laughs> Always ask for referrals. Uh, when, you, when, when, you, uh, uh, when people sign up and at checkpoints, and if you aren't offering checkpoints as a free function of their membership, I can't stress to you enough. I do want to go ahead and add one more that I actually forgot about. I, I had a similar, uh, different presentation I gave here last year, and Thomas was uh, filming it then. He's our camera guy, uh, really super nice guy. If you want to meet somebody, he's really cool. He's the guy. And um, he reminded me just before this of something that I mentioned in the speech last year that he uses now in his marketing, and I'd forgotten about it, and I wasn't, and I'd forgotten to add it to this speech. It's huge. It's so huge, it's a lay down, and people don't do it because of fear. And it's free. I'll give this one to you for free. <clears throat> if your gym is in a neighborhood or near a neighborhood, and you just go knock on the doors and introduce yourself to people and invite them to your gym, you will get members. It is money lying on the ground. Nobody does it, and human beings are thirsty and dying for human interaction in this society. Human beings are dying for interaction in this society. How many times do people go home, they drive in their garage, they close that garage door, and they're staying inside their house, they don't know their neighbor? Okay? I hate that. I hate that about my own life. I hate that there's a guy that died of cancer living next door to me, and I hardly knew the guy. That's actually a true story. Just a poor guy just died like four weeks ago. And uh, I was ashamed. I went over there and apologized because I don't get to know him. People dig it. They love it when you come to their door now. It's not like, how many times has a salesperson knocked on your door this year? It doesn't happen anymore. I mean, door-to-door -door sales, extremely rare. You're not over there selling something. Hey, I just want to introduce, your, introduce myself to you. My name is Betty or Kyle or whatever. And I'm the manager or the owner of the gym right over here. And I just want to let you guys know we're here and to give you a free guest pass. I'm your neighbor, and I just want to meet you and let you know if you ever have any questions about um, cancer provision or any of these kind of things that we do over there, I just want you to know you can call me anytime. And I appreciate you taking my time. Okay, take, uh, taking a couple minutes just to talk to me today. Wow, cool. I'm going to remember that. It stands out in people's mind because it's something different. If, you're, if you talk to any marketing person, it's the thing that makes you different that people are going to remember. And I want to say one more thing about this. Um, last year, I went door knocking with my son. He's in Cub Scouts, and we were selling popcorn. Most of the kids in our group don't even do it. They, they sell it with parents or grandparents. That is it. So I said, no, I'm going to go take my kid door knocking. And I will probably remember five things out of last year, three years from now. I won't really remember everything that happened unless I'm looking through pictures. But if you ask me, what happened in 2010? Well, and I kind of go down it, and one of the things I will remember is going door to door with my son. Because I met a lot of people in my neighborhood, and I know that the people I went to remember us. Because when we went back this year, Austin said to my son, So good to see you again. And they just, Where's the popcorn order for him? They all remembered us. Because he had a pitch, I made him memorize a pitch. And it was really cute, and he looks good in his uniform. And so, uh, those kind of things, those non standard things, you, you know, are, are, are you willing to take your your frigate and go slam it into the other guys and take over their ship? You know, are you willing to go put it all on the number to keep your business going? Are you willing to go hug the member who's shouting at you? These are all non-standard ways of doing things. Going door to door used to be standard, it isn't anymore, but it's money lying on the ground. Are you afraid of going door to door? Because fear is the source of anger. And if you're mad about your membership, if you're mad about not making money, is because you're afraid of not doing, not doing the hard things to make you money. And going door to door is great because people are going to love you for doing it. Does anybody have any questions for me? Right back there. Um, I have a question about Facebook. Um, I have a, I'm trying to attract a senior market. Do you think, and I've got a person that I'm, it's called a social media director, that's all she handles is Twitter and Facebook for me. Do you think spending time uh, on Facebook going for the senior market, I mean, do you think that's a good use of Resources. Is the senior market um, involved in Facebook? Absolutely. The interesting thing about seniors is that they're on there, but they're like a bunch of creepers. Okay, they're, they go and see what's going on, they check up on people, but they don't post. Okay, they're not posters, they're checking things out. Um, but um, 
it's a good way to create the top of the mind awareness. If you want actions out of seniors, then I highly recommend a coupling it with something like lead bags around the neighborhood where they are, or a direct mailer and door knocking. My gosh, I mean, seniors are just looking for people to talk to, y'all. But if you do schedule time to go talk to senior, seniors, schedule some time, okay? You might be talking for a long time, okay? Just be, have your mind, you know what, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the retirement community over here, you know? And the, in the retirement communities, there's a Dell Webb community that my, my parents go to. My dad told me that the average um, savings of the person in the Dell Webb community where he is is $2 million. Okay, these people have the money, all right? And they're, they like to walk. But you know what walking doesn't do for you? It doesn't slow down your bone loss significantly enough. And they're all dealing with one out of two women has osteoporosis after the age of 50, one out of eight men. Guess what happens to those people when they break a bone? <clears throat> you break a hip over the age of 60 or 70, you know you got an average of six to eight months to live. Not because of the broken bone, because you're in bed for six or eight months healing from it. So what do they got to do? Got to come see you. What is, how, do you. How do you solve that? Weight training. Resistance training. How would you market that? Do you market it as a gym or do you market it as a solution? That's what I would do to those people. I have another question. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Uh, on those lead bags, the lead boxes, is there a certain formula? Yes. As many as you can, as many as you can. Every business within a two mile radius, you should, you should um, go and introduce yourself and put a lead bag in there. And the script is very important. You can get turned down a lot. And the script is this, I'll say it again if you want to write it down. And I'll go slowly twice. Hi, my name is Kyle. I'm with the XYZ gym. And then I say the location across from Taco Bell, right over here at the intersection of whatever. Okay, my name, who I'm with, where I'm at. That's the first thing. The next thing, and I'm holding the bag. I'd like to go ahead and leave this bag here so your customers could register for a one week membership at our location to see how they could take advantage of, you could even throw a power statement in there, cancer prevention. Yeah, we do that. And in exchange, and I can't even stress the importance of that, and in exchange, I would like to get a business card or flyer from you so I could post it in my business without hesitating, would over here be okay? Because you got to pick out the spot. When you walked in, you look around, where's the spot? Man, where'd my eyes go right when I walked into the business? Right there, that's where I want that lead bag. Because it's yellow, everything in the store is a different color and yellow's gonna pop out. Hi, my name is Kyle. I own the gym over here at uh, XYZ Gym, right over here at the, uh, across from Taco Bell at the intersection of Main and First. I'd like to go ahead and leave this back here for your customers could register for a free one week membership and also to attend one of our memberships on how to on cancer prevention. And in exchange, I'd like to go ahead and get one of your flyers or business cards so that I can leave it in my business. Would over here be okay? That's it. And it will get every time. If you go in there and go, yeah, um, can we leave this here in your business? No? Okay. Did you want a guest pass? No? All right. <laughs> I saw they, that's what people do. When you ask for somebody for a referral at, at, their, at the new, new membership sales, and, you'd like to, and who would you like to give it to? Quit looking in their eye and look down as you're about to write. Put your pen on the name line. Question? And supposing they say, no, what? I'm sorry, we have a policy against that. That's fine. No problem. Hey, would you like to go ahead and have a flyer on how, do we, how we do cancer prevention? You know, cancer prevention, cancer rates are rising in this country. You'd like to figure out how to prevent, who do, anybody in here personally, can you raise your hand if you uh, don't know anybody who's had cancer? Okay, we all do. I mean, that would be, that would be my opening. That's really good. I was, uh, y'all should do that one. That one's free. I mean, seriously, cancer prevention, I can, I can list off five foods off the top of my head and, and two vitamins you absolutely have to be taking. And I know the amounts and I know what it does to your body and you should too. And you can put that in a seminar and people are going to be very appreciative of it. Anybody else have any questions? Go ahead. Is, is there a spot where you're um, finding these kinds of um, information that you cite uh, for the studies? 
for I'm sure you have a lifetime of knowing all this, but some of some of the um, scare statistics. Yes. Scare statistics. Scare statistics. One in two people are getting. One in two women have osteoporosis after the age of 50. Um, one in eight men have osteoporosis after the age of 50. Uh, can't WebMD. You know, um, you could just go type, go into Google and type in cancer rates in the United States. Heart disease in the United States. Heart disease, rates of heart disease in the United States. Go into Google. Um, you know, that, that kind of stuff is just, I mean, the internet's a beautiful thing. If I'd have said this 10 or 12 years ago, where do you get that? I don't know. I don't know where I got that. Somebody told me. I read it somewhere, you know. So, yeah, the internet. You can just type in whatever you want. You know, um, workouts and increased HGH. You know, how to increase HGH. Well, you'll get past all the drugs. And you'll get down there on page seven, and it'll be, oh, by the way, working out increases HGH. There's another supplement you can sell that increases HGH naturally called GABA. You know what GABA is? All this stuff I'm telling you, it didn't do with prospecting. I apologize. GABA, everybody should be taking GABA if they're working out. It's an amino acid. It is the one amino acid that's a precursor to creating your own human growth hormone. And it's safe because it's creating your own human growth, growth hormone. If you're taking GABA and working out, you know, women, be prepared. Your man's going to be a different guy in about 30 to 60 days. <clears throat> you, tell, you tell men that, they're going to pay attention. Men over 50, I'm 42, so I really don't know about that. Um, but tell me, uh, seriously, they're, they're thinking about it. They know it. The men that work out, don't worry about it. Uh, I hope you guys learned something today. Um, it wasn't all about prospecting. It was a little bit about image changing. But um, as I thought about preparing for the uh, presentation, I was... Um, I was, I've been worried about this industry and I've been worried about uh, people and, um, and I thought about myself and the way that I make decisions and w how I was affected um, with my recent decision to go to the chiropractor. By the way, just a little success story on the chiropractor. Uh, when I went and she x-rayed me, my spine was just like this. It was awful. I looked at my back and I was like, seriously? No wonder I'm all jacked up. And uh, so she w I went for three months and she's got my spine about 70% straightened out. And that was like two and a half months ago. So she says, you're probably about 90% now. And I feel better. And so uh, chiropractic's a good thing. Anyway, um, it changed my life. And it was that piece of information. It was the holistic approach to whole health that got me to make that decision. And I thought, man, that is huge. And if health clubs aren't doing that, if they just keep selling services, then we're really missing the boat as a group. So consider that. I hope it helps you guys. I hope that you take away at least something that made you some money today. And I uh, hope you appreciate it. So thank you again for coming. My name's Kyle. Stop by the booth. Thank you. <laughs> if y'all think of any other questions you want to ask me, I'm going to be, there's, a, uh, there's an ask, ask the expert thing um, going on at 1230 tomorrow in the main deal. If you think of another question, feel free to come on by. I do appreciate you being here today. Thank you.